Well, good morning, my friends. It's an early morning walk with this guy, and then we have a lot of errands to run today. And then I'm gonna take him for a big hike up Griffith Park. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. So the first thing I need to do today actually is go to Ross and buy some more jeans. I'm wearing out all my jeans, so it's gonna be a priority. Plus I wanna do it early in the day because they get ridiculously long lines. So let's just go knock it out and then we'll go start doing some vlogging. And I have a uh, dinner and movie plan later, but I don't know what we're gonna see yet. So I have to get all this done before six o'clock. And I'm also on the lookout today for some good walking shoes. I know I sing the praises of the uh, the Pumas for trips, but the last trips that I've worn Pumas on, they have caused blisters all over the bottom of my feet. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I wear different shoes every day or what it is, but I want to find something that's like extremely comfortable, start wearing it about a month before I go to Rome, and then I'm going to make those just my solid walking shoes that whole time because it's cobblestone streets, and I don't want to mess around on a 10-day trip like in Budapest where right towards the end of my trip I could almost not even walk. I don't want to go that route again, so I want to be prepared a little bit better this time. Well, normally I would walk this, but since I have so much to do, I'm gonna drive over to Ross. All right, let's get this over with. Actually, this is a pretty good time of the day to do this. When there's any open parking spaces in this parking lot, that means it's a good time, because normally there's nothing up here. And that escalator almost never works. Almost never. So let's see if the elevator does. I push the button. Nope, I've been waiting for about two minutes. I give up. I'm gonna have to walk across the uh, to the other side and walk up the stairs. No big deal. It's just I was trying to avoid having to walk all the way across the parking lot for something. This should have been so easy. Who knows? Maybe I'll even find the shoes here. Wow, it has changed in here. It's really empty. Like most of the racks and all the stuff are gone. Wonder if it's going out of business. Well. See, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Totally not my style. I just asked, they said they're remodeling. I thought they were closing down, but I guess they just moved all the men's stuff all the way to the other side of the store. All right, I am rather relieved to hear they're not going out of business because as much as I do complain about some things, I do actually really like this place. They usually pretty much never let me down other than just usually bad lines. All right, this is the section I need. I'm usually 11 and a half, 12. All right, I know this looks ridiculous, but I'm gonna try all these because they're all kind of within the price range and they kind of feel like the comfort I would want. So I'm just gonna try them all on now and see what I feel. Surprisingly, I really like these Skechers. These are really comfortable. I kind of wish they had like a navy blue. I might look online and see if they do, but these are so far the most comfortable out of everything I've tried on. See, I like the look of these the best. These coach kind of like, I don't know what they are, moccasins or whatever, but they're just not quite as comfortable as the others. Plus, even for being discounted, they're $70 because they're Coach. I don't really need Coach. These Under Armour are extremely comfortable, but uh, I don't know. They're extremely comfortable and I've always loved the Under Armours I've owned, but I almost don't trust basketball shoes because they're just not enough grip and everything for cobblestone streets. And they're a bit flashy, wouldn't you say? These look really cool, and they're not too badly priced, but they just, the material makes them feel a little bit too snug, a little bit too tight, which is always the problem with shoes, because like, these are made by the same company, and they're just variations of each other, but even they feel different when I put them on. Like, these feel way better than those, but they both feel pretty good, but I just prefer a different color, I think. And these are just kind of like old-fashioned hiking type shoes. I've never owned a pair, but they're only 20 bucks, so I figure I'll try them on. Nah, too small, too tight. All right, I found some 11 and a half. These are a little bit better. No, tough decision. I found some online that are the same style, but a different color. I almost want those, they're the same price anyway. I think I decided on this pair, even though the other pair is just a touch more comfortable. These I think look better. And uh, I think I might get the pair online too, since I have a gift card. And uh, try them both, and whichever ones I don't like, I'll just send back or whatever. All right, now we're looking for jeans. Got a handful of pants to try on real quick. Oh, nice. Well, I ended up buying quite a bit more than I expected. I ended up buying two pairs of jeans, a pair of shoes, and a yoga mat. 
and I had to come in Ralph's for one thing, dental floss. Okay, two things. All right, let's head west. Well, today our vlog is this florist, the Parisian florist. Now it's one of the oldest florists in all of Los Angeles. Well, I would say the Hollywood area actually. It's been here for some 93 years, going all the way back to 1924. And the reason that I came out to vlog this today is because this was once considered the florist of the stars. Elizabeth Taylor would have flowers from her father's grave purchased here. Charles Lawton would get flowers here, Rock Hudson, Catherine Hepburn, Lucy and Desi. Um, I mean, you name it back in that era and they were buying flowers here. One of those people was actually Marilyn Monroe. And so when Marilyn Monroe died, Joe DiMaggio made arrangements with this florist to let this florist be the only florist that was allowed to have any kind of flowers at Marilyn's funeral. So he created a lavish blanket display that would go over top of the casket as well as heart-shaped wreaths and various other beautiful flower or floral arrangements. And then Joe DiMaggio came in here on August 7th, 1962, and he placed an order that Marilyn Monroe would get six roses, long-stemmed roses, three times a week forever. That was what the original order was for, forever. And that actually happened for quite a while until 1982. 20 years later, without really any warning, Joe DiMaggio called up and said that he wanted the flowers cut back to only two days a week. And then shortly thereafter, he called and said he wanted them all stopped altogether. Now, no one really seems to know why, although I did read an article recently about how towards the end of Joe DiMaggio's life, he, uh, he was really paranoid about going broke. And they said that he would do just about any baseball card show or any kind of autograph signing that would come his way. And they said later on in his life, he would walk around San Francisco with like $600,000 in cash in a briefcase. I don't know if that's true, but that was one of the stories that I had heard. And so for all those years, this florist would make sure that Marilyn Monroe was always cared for. They said that they delivered over 18,000 flowers in the time that they were, um, I bas guess, basically under contract to do this for Joe DiMaggio. And the family that owned it then is still the same family that owns it now, and they never raised the prices on him. Now I know at one point they actually had some photos and some memorabilia, um, even an autographed baseball of Joe DiMaggio that was made out to this place. So I'm to go in and see if they still have it and if they'll let me take a look at it. Oh yeah, right up there you can see the sign says on August 7th, 1962, Joe DiMaggio asked Parisian floors to create a casket blanket for his wife Marilyn Monroe. Yep. And then there you can see various pictures of the grave. And then there's the, uh, the flowers on the casket. Wow. And here are uh, various clippings talking about that. Try and get myself out of here. Here's them delivering the flowers to her grave. Telly Savalas was actually one of the, uh, the other famous people that would get flowers here. I'm kind of surprised that somebody didn't hear about Joe DiMaggio canceling the order and then they decide to do the order themselves. Nowadays you would think that would happen. Well, this is the inside, and they were definitely nice enough to let me look around and show the memorabilia they have. Now, of course, they don't have it out on display, but I saw a picture online that they had a autographed baseball from Joe DiMaggio to the owner, the original owner, Lewis, here when he used to uh, have that order coming. And it's kind of crazy that, like I said, I'm just surprised with the news, you know, 
still being out there that Marilyn doesn't get those flowers. I'm surprised that nobody that's a gigantic Marilyn Monroe fan or a celebrity hasn't re rearranged to have this florist re-deliver um, that three flowers three times a week, or actually it was six roses three times a week. All right, another day, another hike. He's ready to rock. He loves it. We're getting there. Well, here's the first landing. We rarely stop here. We're here. Well, this guy did pretty good. We were just finishing up the trail and I noticed this off to the side, so I wanted to come by and see what the deal was. There's a, uh, you see this orange tree? There's a little, uh, there's a little wreath or something. Looks like a, um, I don't want to go in there, it's all muddy, but yeah, it looks like a, uh, like a Jim Morrison type belt, doesn't it? Wonder if somebody died there or if there's a reason why that's there, huh? And that right there is why I don't want to go in. It's pretty much all that little marshland. All right, well, it's six o'clock and I'm here to have my, uh, my evening plans and I'll catch up with you guys later. Well, Jeffrey, tell him what happened. Tell him instead of uh, going to the movies tonight, we decided to come back to my apartment and watch The Darkest Hour. The DVD that I was just showing you guys yesterday that I was all excited to watch about the new, or about Winston Churchill. Got halfway through the movie and then it got all glitchy and messed up and we couldn't finish watching the rest of the movie. I guess I'll never know what happened. Well, good evening, Lionhearts. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog today. This wasn't exactly the one that I planned on doing um, when I ended the vlog the night before, but just things came up and my plans changed in the evening and I just had to roll with it. Sometimes you have to roll with it. So I have a pretty good one planned tomorrow. I'm hoping it happens. I'm actually, uh, I, I'm actually relying on someone else for tomorrow's vlog. And he's been a little wishy-washy, just kind of been like, yeah, give me a call the day of, I'm sure we can make it happen kind of thing. So I'm really hoping it happens because he has a pretty interesting place and I want to definitely check it out. So come back and see me tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one watching and hope you enjoyed the vlog. Have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>